Hello everyone. Welcome back to Computer Vision Lecture Series. This is Lecture 5, Part 5. Uh, we will continue talking about um, cameras and optics and specifically this uh, part we are talking about projective geometry and we are going to study uh, the characteristics of the projections. So uh, let's go ahead. Uh, in the last part, we saw our how, uh, how we can model our um, uh, projections which we generate from real world to the image plane through a uh, pinhole camera model. And that is our basic model to study uh, the process of, um, of generating uh, projections. Uh, in this part, we are going to talk about perspective projections which is uh, the follow up of the pinhole camera model and also we will discuss about the interesting intrinsic and the extrinsic properties of the camera parameters and how uh, adding one or removing one and uh, what are the assumptions being made and what are the free parameters to be estimated for the uh, for the camera okay a little recap um, projection what is projection projection is basically having um, a world coordinates of x, y, and z, a point in the real world coordinate, um, being mapped into image coordinates in this image plane as, uh, as p here. So what happens here? Let's follow this ray of light. So from here, on this, from this point, yellow point, the light passes through the center of the optical center or the camera center. Uh, this can be um, a pinhole or a, or a lens in general. Uh, the ray of light passes through and it's projected on the image plane here. Um, what are the relationship of, uh, of these distances that are formed or these objects that are formed on the image plane and in the real world plane? That is given by our intercept theorem. Intercept theorem basically states that when uh, you have these rays of light and, and you have this uh, camera axis going through here and you know that there is a, um, a real world plane here and this is an image plane here and uh, intercept theorem basically gives you the proportion of the line segments formed between these two intersecting lines. Uh, here x is the real world point, point in the real world and u is the its corresponding point formed in the image plane similarly y is a point is a point in the real world and uh, v is the point formed in the image plane uh, so essentially the three dimensional world coordinates are converted into two dimensional image coordinates that's what uh, projection means um, in projections, we are basically studying the geometry of our real world because we are also mapping uh, different objects into image plane and we want to study what kind of characteristics the objects or the uh, formed in the image plane still have or uh, which and which properties have they lost. So. In this example of the image plane here, there is an image of the um, from the previous uh, part. Uh, it's not easy to say the height of this person. Same is here. So both of these lines are same uh, length, but uh, there uh, it's it's not easy to say uh, what what will be their heights. So uh, similar example, uh, another example is uh, if you have these two objects here. Uh, it's difficult to uh, say which is closer just, be, uh, just because it is a perspective uh, projection. So uh, essentially when we have uh, mapped uh, real world coordinates into an image plane, uh, these projections do not have, uh, they do not preserve length and so if they don't preserve length, uh, they do not preserve the area as well. length and area both are not preserved this is a, a geometrical example o is your optical center b c and a are real world uh, points points in the real world and a dash b dash c dash and c dash are points in the image plane here you can see 
uh, their, uh, their projections, the length of the projections. The length of B and C points are the same from the, uh, however, in real world, they, they do not have the same length and therefore the length is, uh, the length is lost. Similarly, these two parallel lines that are formed here are these two lines, okay? And as you can see from here, the area has changed completely here as well. This is uh, called force short shortening. This also happens when we take selfies. For example, if you are taking a, your selfie of your face from a weird angle or from uh, a, a perspective which is not straight, uh, your face looks smaller or bigger accordingly. Uh, this is very popular. If you have seen a lot of selfies, uh, these days there, uh, there are a lot of selfies being uploaded on social media platforms. Uh, you will see that uh, these selfies do not give, uh, do not, are not, uh, or they cheat your actual image uh, lens or the sizes. And that is called foreshortening. Also, angles are lost. For example, this red line here is clearly a perpendicular line in the real world however in the image plane this is definitely not perpendicular similarly these blue lines in the real world are parallel however in the re, uh, image plane they are not so parallelism is also lot lost so what is preserved uh, straight lines are still straight as you can see uh, these lines these lines uh, on the edges uh, these are all preserved um, what else is preserved? So we have already seen this uh, vanishing, we, we have already done the discussion about vanishing points and lines. Uh, I'm just going to go breeze through it, breeze over it. So uh, all the all the parallel lines on this, that are lying on the same plane in the real world, they converge to a, a common point here. So if there are an, a, 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 some more parallel lines, for example, let's say this the, the top of this grass and the bottom of this grass, they are actually parallel so both of these also will meet at, at infinity similarly these rail tracks and they both will meet at two different points uh, sorry they both will meet at the same point and if there are more parallel lines uh, on this same plane as this rail tracks uh, it will meet at another vanishing point and a line that is formed along uh, connecting all these vanishing point is the vanishing line for example the horizon um yes and um, uh, so uh, an image can have uh, a lot of different uh, uh, vanishing points uh, but there are the uh, so there are three major or three different kind of vanishing points so why are we discussing this okay i forgot this but uh, i want to repeat uh, why are we discussing this is that parallelism is lost in perspective projection so in this image plane clearly these two lines are not parallel but there are certain properties of this um, projection that are preserved and we can use them to recover the geometry or, or, or the camera uh, or by camera parameters or the real world geometry we will see later on how to do that so there are three uh, vanishing uh, point so uh, any perpendicular line for example these pillars here these iron pillars these are parallel in the image plane and their uh, vanishing point is at infinity that is one kind of vanishing point another kind is uh, let's say this um, uh, this scales or this uh, textures on the walls of the house they form another vanishing point at infinity and uh, this uh, edges of the roof they form uh, another vanishing point and infinity all these three vanishing points they do not lie inside the image that is very important to note here so we will come back to our original example uh, we want to see what is the, will be the effect if the focal length and z so the distance between the camera center and the object and that of the uh, focal length of the camera what if they both are equal that would mean that the distances are preserved so let's say there is another candle here and then next to it that the distance between these two will be preserved relatively of course but um, that will be preserved so this is something else which is also preserved in projective geometry okay 
so we have uh, we have seen or we have uh, studied um, how real world points are projected onto the Im image plane right so this is the real world um, coordinate system and this is the camera system where this is the image plane or the sensor where the um, images are captured or the uh, or the real world points are being projected uh, an object or a point in the real world is translated or rotated and then it is projected through this camera center or the optical center through this optical device onto the image plane that is essentially our setup here uh, what are the properties here so x capital x represents the world coordinate of our point t is the translation of that point r is the rotation that the point goes through k is the intrinsic matrix or the intrinsic parameters of the camera and x small x is the image coordinates of the corresponding capital uh, x in the image plane and uh, we say the k is the intrinsic matrix and um, r and t are the uh, extrinsic uh, matrix these are this is a blog post a series of uh, three different uh, parts where the author is discussing in interesting manner uh, the interesting and uh, extrinsic extrinsic decomposition of the camera parameters or the camera matrix how it is called and there is a very good toy example of the perspective camera here you can play with different um, which we are going to look into our lecture as well different um, uh, assumptions you let go of assumptions uh, certain assumptions or you enter certain uh, values so there will there are certain free parameters uh, which we need to estimate or which needs need need, need a prediction or which we need to uh, we need to understand this uh, complete projection or recover this projection of the real world from the uh, Im image or from the image to the real world so if we know this camera matrix we will be able to map each and every point in the real world to the image and uh, vice versa and this example or these blog posts give a very good very good follow through of it uh, we are going to also discuss the, those things but if you want to take a deeper look into it and play with this demo here i recommend you to go and play with this demo at the end of this uh, lecture okay so what do we so we want to see um, we want to see how we can uh, handle this projective geometry right so we uh, create a projective coordinate um, where we add an extra w w to the cartesian coordinates of every 2d point um so what does it mean uh, let's say you are generating this image from a from a projector or from a source and all the uh, points in the image they are coming from or being uh, generated at this uh, from this projector um, so you add this w is w is essentially the scale or the distance at which this image is formed from the uh, projector you include that as part of the projective coordinate we will see uh, why and uh, what will be the effect and what advantages we get uh, by changing or converting into projective coordinates. So let's say there is a W1 here and if you increase W's value and um, sorry if you decrease the w, uh, W's value and uh, the source becomes um, comes closer to the image and the, the image that is formed on the camera sensor is, is smaller. So the projection becomes smaller if you change the scale of the um, change the, the value of W and therefore uh, it is important to know the exact value of this W right. So uh, every 2D point in projective coordinates is written as X, Y and W and which is W where is defined as the scale of the projected image and each uh, and so uh, every point in this image will be is becoming a uh, array because uh, every point here is represented as a tuple here x y and w where w uh, shows the direction of the projection or the scale in this case uh, of the projected image uh, similar uh, arguments or similar uh, transformation in 3d also so in 3d a point x y z becomes x y z w uh, similarly, when you change the value of, uh, uh, so if the, if objects are far away, they appear smaller clearly in perspective projection. Um, perspective is varying, is W varying with Z. Z. 
So Z is basically the depth of your uh, real world. And if the depth changes, the W changes uh, directly. So now you are able to see um, a bit more clearly the role of, of W here. Um, projective coordinates or homogeneous coordinates, they are called as. Uh, how do we convert them from uh, 2D image coordinates to homogeneous coordinates? You just add or pad one to the vector. Similarly, in the 3D, you add one. And if you want to convert from 2D to homogeneous, um, sorry, for converting from homogeneous coordinates to image uh, coordinates, you just, you just divide the third or the last uh, value with the first two values and you will recover the 2D image coordinates. Similarly, in order to recover 3D image coordinates from homogeneous coordinates, you also divide W with all these three values. Um, by doing this, by converting to homogeneous coordinates, we are achieving scale invariance. Here we saw how uh, changing Z or the depth of your, uh, uh, of your, uh, from your real world in your real world, uh, if the depth of the real world changes, uh, the objects will have different sizes or they will appear smaller if they are farther, they will appear bigger if they are nearer. So W is a scale which is sensitive uh, in this case. How to make uh, this insensitive? Uh, homogeneous coordinates makes that value insensitive. How? So let's say if you have uh, homogeneous coordinates given by here like this and you multiply all of uh, you multiply this scale to x, y and w um, like this and if you want to convert into Cartesian coordinates what do you do? You multiply the third coordinate uh, sorry divide the third coordinate with first and second and when you do that you are you lose the k scaling here so homogeneous coordinates achieve scale invariance in this um, so if we can in uniformly scale the projective space it will produce the same image essentially, right? So if we have different sizes of um, images or the different scales in homogeneous coordinates, they will all produce the same image. And um, therefore we have achieved scale invariance or scale, um, uh, we have gotten rid of scale in ambiguity that we were discussing earlier. So reference scale is really important as we have discussed until now. Um, let's say from this tour, photo tourism paper that we introduced in the previous part of this uh, lecture, um, uh, the, the authors created this uh, 3D point cloud or a 3D view of all the images collected around this uh, landmark. Okay. Now, how do we, how do the authors know which landmark are nearer to the landmark and which are uh, away from the landmark? So it is important in this case that we know at least uh, we know the scale of at least one of these images. So from all of these images, at least one image has the actual distance bit from the uh, landmark to the camera center. And if that scale or that reference scale is known, uh, it would be easier to plot other um, images or um, um, points with respect to the um, uh, this reference uh, point. Um, traditionally or usually this information is not easy to get and therefore uh, uh, in, the, in the research uh, we have usually done some assumptions uh, for this scale. So in, in homogeneous co co coordinates how do the geometry how does the geometry look like? So these are the basics of uh, any coordinate system. You take up any coordinate system and you want to see how to represent lines, points, planes, perpendiculars, uh, and different um, um, you know shapes. So how do you represent a line equation in homogeneous coordinates is represented like this a, b and c. Similarly when you add one pixel that becomes your homogeneous coordinate. For, uh, uh, add one to the pixel coordinate to, to get the uh, homogeneous coordinate here. Um, a line is given by clearly multiplication or a cross sorry not a multiplication a cross product of two different points. And similarly, an intersection of two different lines um, is given by the cross product here. Uh, these are some basics of, basics of this geometry in uh, uh, homogeneous coordinate. Uh, what another ex advantage we get by converting our points to homogeneous coordinates is this. So let's go back here. 
to just see the exam um, the effect the problem here is that uh, these two lines although are parallel they do not so parallel lines usually when they intersect they will cre create a parallelogram right these two lines the red and the blue they are parallel but they do not create a parallelogram here clearly right so when we convert these image coordinates or this cartesian coordinates into homo uh, homogeneous coordinates we achieve this uh, or we preserve this parallelism by uh, and and therefore um, uh, yeah so parallelism is uh, preserved that is another problem that is solved by homogeneous coordinates so this is our original um, camera matrix or the projection matrix that we call it uh, our world coordinates in homogeneous coordinates x y z and one and padded one translation ma matrix rotation matrix intrinsic matrix and our image coordinates also in the homogeneous coordinates and now we will see or study how to estimate and what are the assumptions we have made by uh, when this image from the real world is transformed into the image uh, point in the image uh, plane um, the intrinsic assumptions uh, there are two kinds of assumptions that we have made uh, extrinsic assumptions and intrinsic assumptions As, uh, extrinsic assumptions means that we are not rotating our point or translating it anywhere so essentially or uh, our uh, point our uh, focus point x lies at the um, uh, does not have any rotation associated with it and it has no translation so it lies um, with respect to the camera at 0 comma 0 comma 0 similarly for interesting assumptions we are assuming unit aspect ratio what does this mean unit aspect ratio means that on, in the x direction and in the y direction the the changes are similar or they have the same sizes Similarly, in the interesting assumption, we are assuming that our optical center or the camera center is at 0, 0, which is here. And there is no skew. Uh, what we mean by that is uh, due to lens uh, distortions or um, any other external parameters, uh, sorry, any other internal parameters, may, the image does not get distorted. So it will appear as it is in the real world. Uh, so these are the assumptions that we make. Here K is represented as the um, intrinsic matrix so these are the intrinsic assumptions here is the intrinsic matrix so let's uh, let's let go of our um, uh, how do you say the optical center if if uh, we don't know the optical center usually it is assumed to be at 0 comma 0 but if we don't know the optical center what are we saying here we are saying here that we don't know the camera center so when taking the image we don't remember or we don't have the information of uh, the coordinates of the camera so uh, u0 and v0 appear here in the intrinsic matrix right let's make another assumption or we remove uh, basically the assumptions we remove the um, uh, unit aspect ratio so in in the beginning as i said that um, the x and y uh, distances are the same or the sizes are the same we let go of that assumption also and therefore we will introduce this scaling f in two different directions so with uh, in x direction it is x and in f y direction is fy uh, we make another uh, we let go of another uh, assumption is that we allow some skewing to happen um, so s is the factor uh, which is an internal parameter of the camera and maybe uh, uh, the camera is not so good and therefore when the projection of the real world uh, of the real objects is made on the camera plane it gets skewed and therefore that parameter is represented by s so now we have this um, assumptions removed from the intrinsic uh, camera matrix so now in the intrinsic camera matrix we have five free parameters fx fy u0 v0 and s so there are five degrees of freedom here uh, interesting question if you have five degrees of freedom how many points do you need uh, to recover all these uh, free uh, parameters uh, uh, an analogy i will give you is this 
in order to solve a linear equations um, in three variables how many minimum equations do you require okay uh, assuming that um, these equations are independent that is they are not uh, parallel um, and they are do not um, how do you say they are not the same lines so assuming those uh, things how many uh, equations do you think you need uh, similarly the same question I'm applying here if you have five different degrees of freedom or five free parameters how many points do you think you will need to recover these points so what I'm asking you essentially is how many set of u call uv and x comma y comma z uh, you will need to recover these uh, free parameters so think about it now next we are going to assume that our uh, real world point is oriented and also translated so we will include both of these um, par uh, parameters and we will let go of this assumption so right now we are assuming that there is no rotation but there is some translation so we add the uh, the values of translation in the x direction y direction and z direction as uh, a column vector here and since there is no rotation we uh, keep the um, a rotation matrix as the identity matrix but let's assume also that we let go of the rotation assumption and we assume that the rotation is around the coordinate axis in the counterclockwise direction and for that there are specific uh, metric matrices that represent those rotations uh, rotation in x in with uh, angular value of alpha is given as this with y with angular value of beta is given by this so this matrices you already know and we bring these matrix or the values back and keep it inside our rotation matrix so now we have removed all kinds of intrinsic and extrinsic uh, assumptions for our camera matrix these are our image coordinates these are our real world coordinates this is the translation uh, column this is rotational uh, matrix uh, fx fy represent the um, uh, aspect ratios S represents the skew factor and U0 and V0 represent the camera center or the optical center. In this intrinsic um, camera matrix, we know there are five uh, different um, free parameters. Here, although we can see clearly that there are um, uh, 12 freely uh, uh, free parameters, uh, when we study closely, uh, there are a lot of, uh, a few of these um, uh, values are dependent on the other and therefore we are brought down to six different degrees of freedom so six plus five there are total in total uh, 11 degrees of freedom again the question comes um, in order to convert a real world coordinate a real a point in the real world to a point in the image plane there are 11 different degrees of freedom how many set of these points of image plane and real world plane or real world do you need to recover this camera matrix that is the question that we are solving so again i uh, i recommend you to go through this three blog posts uh, they don't take much time i think uh, every each of one of them is like 10 minutes or 15 minutes but depending on your reading speed and your if you want to take a pause for understanding so depending on that and definitely play with this um, camera toy it's a good demo where you where you are able to introduce different kind of rotations translations um, and different kind of intrinsic camera um, uh, camera camera parameters to see how it affects the projection of a real world uh, object into the image plane okay we saw until now homographic projection or perspective projection now we are going to see a special case case of perspective projection called orthographic projection in this case the uh, what the assumption is or um, this information is not visible or uh, is sufficiently large so what we mean here center of projection to the image plane is infinite the distance from the center of plane or the center of projection to the image plane is infinite um, uh, the camera center as well as the um, the point here 
uh, or, or the plane here on the image plane they have they are sufficiently large uh, what we mean by infinite it's uh, it's impossible to have this kind of setup to have truly infinite uh, measure what we mean here is that let's say that you are um, um, how do you say the the source or the source or uh, the projector that generates the uh, image plane is uh, at, a, at a distance of two meter whereas the distance between two different points in in this image plane is very minuscule at the in the range of let's say micrometers or nanometers this happens when you're doing imaging for uh, um, when you're doing microscopic imaging for example in that case uh, the distance between two different pixels or different diff distance between two uh, different uh, real world objects is very small uh, for example the length of our, or the width um, the thickness of our hair it is in um, um, millimeters right sorry in, in micrometers so that is what I'm saying that that distance is pretty small in comparison to the distance between the camera center and the image plane and if this center is uh, is if, if this distance is uh, large enough we assume um, that the distance is infinite and in this case the projection that we get is an orthographic projection what we are mean by orthographic projection is that we get an exact replica or kind of the image uh, the, the shape and everything is preserved of the object in the image plane it's also called parallel projection um, what what do you think about the, about the projection matrix since there are there is no so as as i said before the, the this distances or this lens are preserved from the real world to the image plane so the um, uh, there is no scaling factor so uh, the fx and fy become one each uh, there is no skew there is no skew happening so this triangle here is seen as the triangle there is no skew factor uh, involved so the s becomes zero again and since the center of projection is uh, at infinity uh, the u0 and v0 we already know that are zero and therefore it is called orthographic projection however sometimes uh, scaled orthographic projection means that sometime um, the object dimensions are very small as compared to the camera in that case um, it's called a weak pro uh, perspective and we and, and it introduces a certain scaling factor f now it can be f x and f y if the x and y uh, distances are not the same but here we are assuming that both the distances are the same and therefore uh, three free parameters are introduced uh, these are for the um, uh, so the unit aspect uh, ratio is uh, the assumption of unit aspect ratio is gone because it's a weak perspective projection and we introduce um, a shift or a small uh, how do you say uh, yeah a small sh um, sk uh, shift here that is a, uh, that is called a weak perspective okay field of view what is field of view so we have seen um, that so this is our camera here on the uh, at, at the bottom and uh, at different focal lengths the the lights that can enter the camera is uh, is shown here so at this this, uh, this focal length there is there is a lot of light uh, coming here um, from wide range uh, but as soon as you in start increasing the focal length the the width or the or the yeah the width of the uh, image from which the light is uh, received uh, or the image is formed is reducing so um, for example here on the left top left is an image taken with 17 mm focal length uh, if you increase the focal length you are able to zoom in but your field of view decreases so you will lose this left right top bottom information but you will start focusing or you will get more information from the center that is what um, zooming does to um, uh, your field of view and as can be seen clearly increasing focal length decreases our field of view so that brings to our interesting point uh, which is the idea that uh, that uh, that was this is the basic idea or the basic concept to create or make uh, telescopes okay so what if your field uh, focal length is infinite 
um, the more the focal length, the more you are able to zoom, right? So if the focal length is infinite, you should be essentially be able to zoom so much that you are able to see uh, farthest, right? And that is what um, the concept of telescope is. Um, yeah. Another uh, issue that we can talk about is um, uh, beyond pinhole. So the pinhole camera has certain problems also. Um, uh, instead of pinholes, usually there is a, a lens kept there and the lenses are not ideal or they are, if they are not created, if they have some uh, distortion, they introduce these different kind of distortions into the image plane. So uh, based on the shapes of the these different kind of distortions introduced, they are called uh, barrel distortion and pin cushion distortions. Um, basically, along the camera center or the camera line or the optical line, if the magnification decreases uh, when you go away from the camera center, then that kind of distortion is called barrel distortion. And if the magnification increases, if you go away from the camera line or the camera center, that kind of distortion is called pin cushion distortion. They are named from the, the their names come from barrel because uh, this distortion looks like a barrel and pin cushion means that it looks like a cushion um, uh, looked at from a different angle. Uh, on the right hand side, we can see uh, at the top that the, uh, it's a um, uh, barrel distortion. And these days, uh, every camera has a software correction to uh, barrel or this both kind of or there, are, there is one more radial distortion. Um, uh, which is called moustache dis uh, distortion and um, the, uh, the cameras these days that they, they come they, uh, they are uh, taking care of um, this distortion software in, in, in their software so when you make the camera you have to in introduce this uh, uh, pre-processing uh, post-processing methods to in order to remove this kind of distortions um, that this kind of radial distortion is the property of your lens or the uh, camera lens and therefore the higher quality lens you have the lower chances of getting this kind of distortions apertures what is an aperture um, so we let go of the basic setup of pinhole instead of a pinhole we have a real aperture so instead of a one point or a single point through which the light is passing we have a region or a circular region through it the, through which the light can pass now uh, the length of or the depth or uh, the size of this aperture uh, determines your depth of focus what do we mean by that let's say if you increase the size of this aperture it means that a lot of different light is able to form on a lot of different uh, on your image plane so light from every place will be able to uh, will be will be um, incident on your image plane with equal intensity and therefore we get a clear uh, contrast from every uh, on in the every region of the formed image if you start decreasing the aperture of uh, your camera the depth of focus decreases and so the image parts which are away or which are farther away in the real world they start becoming hazy or becoming um, um, yeah they start becoming hazy the more the more uh, you decrease the size of the aperture um, the lesser the lights from the far away objects reach your image plane and therefore um, higher or um, sorry the lower value of uh, the lower um, the aperture um, opening the higher depth of focus you achieve this is a very interesting application of a camera which is called accidental camera. This is really a cool work by Antonio Toralba and William Freeman from um, uh, MIT. So accidental cameras are those instances where um, there is a pinhole kind of uh, a setup formed accidentally. Uh, what they did here, the authors, this is a, the reference frame on which we are going to study, uh, on which they studied also. Um, here you can see that, that there is a light source here. They are assuming that this is a pinhole uh, camera setup. Outside is the real world and inside on the walls is formed 
yeah, the image. So what do they do? Uh, this is the image of the input where the occluder is present and this is the image of the input when, when the occluder is absent. The occluder is this. Uh, if you put on this shade, the occluder is uh, absent, sorry, is present. So uh, this is how it will look when you put on the shades and this is how it will look when you remove the shades. And um, we already know from the cam uh, pinhole camera setup that the image formed is inverted from the real world, right? So uh, when we when the authors they take the difference of these two image they they find um, an image uh, an image or some shapes being formed here and when you invert this it will look something like this this looks something vaguely uh, it shows the sky here the blue sky is clearly seen the terrace is clearly seen the shapes of neighboring buildings are also clearly seen um, and this is very interesting. So it, this, this example shows how um, a simple assumption of pinhole camera is uh, powerful. Here, there is no pinhole. This is like a small window, right? Even so, we are able to see some shapes. So imagine the power of uh, our assumption. So the theory, the better the theory, the better the, um, the practical uh, applications, right? So you're, you need to have a rigorous theory. This is a very good example of that. So what did we learn from this um, uh, from this part or this last part of the projective um, uh, sorry of the cameras is that um, there are vanishing points and vanishing lines um, in the image. Uh, different kinds of vanishing points are present. Uh, we have studied the pinhole camera model and we saw how powerful that camera can uh, this model can be. And we have also studied the camera uh, projection matrix where we have also seen the different free parameters um, available in the camera matrix and we have studied how to convert our um, uh, real world coordinates as well as in 3d and 2d into homogeneous coordinates we also saw the advantages of converting to homogeneous coordinate one of them being that parallelism is uh, preserved and we get scaling invariance by converting to homogeneous coordinates and um, and that's it from uh, from the this lecture lecture five next time we will start studying about camera calibration specifically and we will go deeper into how to uh, calibrate cameras um, until then see you